What's going on guys? This is Chris from Terrestrial Imaging and in this video we're going to be taking the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and we're going to be comparing it to the all new Mavic 3 Thermal. So first we're going to put the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced in the air, we're going to test out its zoom camera and its thermal camera, and then we're going to do the exact same thing with the Mavic 3 Thermal. Once we're done we're going to go back to the office and then we're going to compare the other differences such as the gimbal locks, the controllers, and much more. All right, so like I said, first we're going to start with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. So first I'm going to be going into the Pilot app. I'm going to be going through the pre-flight checklist. Everything looks good. Thing, all right, cool. Now I'm just going to start up the drone. And now I'm going to fly to the light pole that we have here at the baseball field in my area. So let's see. All right, so I'm going to line the drone up, try to get it centered with the light pole. All right, cool. So now, straight off the bat, this is just one time zoom. So now if I were to take that and I were to go to two times zoom, this is what we're looking at. And then let's increase that to, wow, sorry, it's a pretty windy day. So you might see the drone bouncing around a little bit. It's a little hard to stabilize the zoom as it's windy. So now we're looking at two times zoom. This is gonna be four. And just so you know, actually, sorry, my bad, I didn't catch that. So look on the right-hand side of the screen. So I'm actually in record mode. I'm not in photo mode. So in record mode on the Mavic 2 Enterprises Advanced, you're actually only limited to four times zoom. So that's a key difference between the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the Mavic 3 Thermal. So now what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna switch this now into photo mode, and you'll see now that I will actually be able to zoom in more than just four times. So now, all right, so we're still at four. I'm going to zoom in now to 8, and things still look pretty decent at 8 in my opinion, but now as I go into 16, this is when things start to look a little bit blurry. Now I'm going to go into 32, and this is our max zoom in on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, and things are pretty blurry. So the reason things are so blurry is because the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced doesn't have an optical zoom, nor does it have a hybrid, which is a combination of optical and digital. The Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced only has a digital zoom, which means that we're just taking those images, pinching and cropping in, and that's why things are going to look so blurry. So next, we will switch to the thermal camera, and now... I will zoom in right over here. So on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, the thermal does have, let's see, up to 16 times zoom, but you'll see that things look pretty blocky and pixelated and it's really hard to distinguish. All you're gonna really see is those colors. Now, as I zoom out a little bit, again, things are looking pretty pixelated. Back to four, things are looking okay. And as we zoom back out to one, that's our full 640 by 512 uh, resolution. Things are decent, um, but as we put the Mavic 3 Thermal in the air, you'll see that there are definitely some differences. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring the Mavic 2 Enterprise back down, land it, and then we're gonna put the Mavic 3 Thermal in the air, and we're gonna check that out. All right, guys, so I now have the controller for the Mavic 3 Thermal in my hand, and right off the bat, things are definitely looking a little brighter. Um, things also are just much more responsive and quicker to load. You'll see that like as you take a picture, the screen won't freeze for a second like it does in the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. Apps load faster. It's just overall, so far, a better experience. So I'm gonna enter the camera view, go through the pre-flight pre checklist, sorry, and then now I'm going to start up the drone. So I am now going to fly to the exact same pole that we looked at for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Now, you'll also see just through the screen recording of the controller, just things look so much brighter and are definitely a lot clearer. So, okay, this should be close enough. All right, so same pole that we were looking at before, same one-time zoom. Again, things just look clear. I'm going to zoom in now to two times. First, I have to select the zoom camera. Um, things are now at two times zoom. This is going to be four. Which, honestly, for right now, in my opinion, kind of looks the same as the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Same kind of like blurry outlines. Um, as I go now into 7, this is where things start to look much better. Um, so this is going to be 14. This is now going to be 28. And this is now going to be 56 times zoom. So again, things just definitely look much better. Now, honestly, let's go back to the 56, right? So 56 times zoom, that, sorry, it's just definitely windy, things are bumping around, but that 56 times zoom, it 
honestly looks better than the 32 times zoom on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. The 32 times zoom on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, again, is just that full digital and it's just super pixelated. All right, so next I am going to do the thermal just like I did on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Except this time, in order to zoom in on the thermal, you have to click on the top right of the controller. There's a link zoom enabled button. So once that's enabled, you'll be able to zoom in your thermal. So now I'm going to zoom in. So this is four times, right? So this is the four times compared to the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Already things look much better. If I now go into 7, 14, 28, and 56, that's kind of where we're capped. Um, things are just looking uh, much better than the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Things are looking less blocky, and I just have a better idea of what I'm actually looking at. All right, so that's just a quick overview and comparison of the thermal and the zoom capabilities of the Mavic 3 versus the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So next we're gonna go back into the shop and we're gonna do a more extensive comparison on other things such as the gimbal guard, the controller, the props, stuff like that. So, see you soon. Okay, so we saw some footage from the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced followed by the Mavic 3 Thermal. And it's quite clear that the Mavic 3 Thermal has some noticeable improvements, especially when it comes to zoom capabilities. So what else is different between these two models? For starters, the two drones are similar in size but have very different flight times. The Mavic 3 Thermal can fly for 42 to 45 minutes depending on the attachments being used. Whereas the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced has a 24 to 31 minute flight time, also depending on the attachments being used. Now, looking at the front of the drones, you'll notice that the Mavic 3 Thermal has a larger gimbal guard that I feel is substantially easier to put on and remove from the camera. Now, at the rear of the Mavic 3 Thermal, you can find an anti-collision strobe light keeping you FAA compliant when flying at night. Now, remember, when flying at night, a strobe light must be on and visible from three statute miles in order to stay compliant. Now again, the strobe light is built into the drone rather than being an external module like on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So now you can either use the RTK module or the speaker at the same time as the strobe light. But keep in mind though that these two accessories are sold separately, unlike with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, where it was sold with three different attachments, which were the beacon, the spotlight, and the speaker. But like the Mavic 3 Thermal, you also have the option to purchase an RTK module separately on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So RTK is actually one of the biggest differences between these two aircrafts, as the RTK module for the Mavic 3 Thermal can now connect directly to the DJI DRTK2 mobile station, while the RTK module for the Mavic 2 could only connect to the NTRIP network. The RTK module for the Mavic 3 Thermal is also capable of correcting the GPS metadata for accurate mapping, whereas the RTK module for the Mavic 2 could not. Next, the accessory port on the Mavic 3 Thermal has a much better design compared to the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. It features a USB-C connector rather than a micro USB connector, and has a rubber cover versus a plastic one. The port cover on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced was poorly designed to be honest, and the plastic cover often did break. Now, despite being sold separately, the attachments for the Mavic 3 Thermal each do have a designated storage slot in the case that comes with the drone, just like the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Now, looking at the back of the Mavic 3 Thermal, you'll find the micro SD card slot. Unlike the Mavic 2, there is no internal storage, and the images and videos can only be recorded to the memory card. Above the memory card slot is a USB-C port that you can now use to charge the battery while it's actually inside of the aircraft. This is simply an additional way to charge your battery, but you can also use the charging hub. Next, the Mavic 3 Thermal uses the new RC Pro controller. The ports on the controller have been moved to the bottom, and the antenna can now move independently of one another. But the actual real differences are seen in the software. The RC Pro uses DJI's new OcuSync 3.0, which greatly improves the image transmission. It also uses the newer Pilot 2 app that the M300 and M30 series use. In flight, you'll notice a huge difference in the live stream of the thermal imaging between the two aircrafts, as we've seen before, but the Pilot 2 uses AI to enhance the live footage of the thermal imaging from the Mavic 3 Thermal to give it a crisper image. Now, when comparing the images saved to the memory card, however, the resolution will be the same because both drones use a 640x512 resolution thermal imaging sensor. Now, here is an example of a picture from the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the Mavic 3 Thermal. Lastly, the biggest difference between the two units is the payloads. 
The Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced has a 48 megapixel, one half inch CMOS sensor, as well as a radiometric thermal imaging sensor. The Mavic 3 also has a 48 megapixel, one half inch CMOS sensor, as well as a 12 megapixel, one half inch CMOS sensor with 56 times zoom capabilities. Lastly, it does also have that 640 by 512 resolution radiometric thermal imaging sensor, just like the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Now, as we saw during the comparison at the start of the video, the telephoto lens on the Mavic 3 Thermal provides a much clearer zooming experience when compared to the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. To wrap up the comparison, I just want to point out a couple of similarities between the models. Both models feature quick disconnect propellers, which is super convenient. They also both offer omnidirectional collision avoidance. The placement of the sensors, though, on the Mavic 3 Enterprise series are in different positions than the sensors on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. And you will notice that the Mavic 3 Enterprise series actually has less sensors. But due to their orientation, you should have the same coverage. Both drones also include DJI's Enterprise Care program with the purchase of each model. After having the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced for quite some time now, I can say the Mavic 3 Thermal is certainly a big upgrade, and I would highly recommend it. For me, the flight time, the RTK module, and the quality of the live stream on the controller are the biggest improvements. If thermal imaging is your primary concern, both models will produce the same deliverables, but if you want the new improvements, you can't go wrong upgrading. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, and if you're looking to purchase the Mavic 3 Thermal, give us a call at 1-800-359-0530 or visit us online at terrestrialimaging.com.